And yet another sign that the Republican Party has been fully captured by Trump is in the GOP is rallying behind several pro-Trump Senate candidates whose campaigns have been engulfed in scandal as Trump himself continues to face more legal scrutiny over the stolen classified documents he stashed away at Mar-a-Lago. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. <laughs> President Biden was in Florida yesterday to survey hurricane damage, where he delivered a very heartfelt speech about unity and putting politics aside to help the people affected by the storm. Although at one point, Biden did find a way to sneak in a little jab at Florida Governor Ron DeSantis by praising him for something I'm guessing DeSantis does not want to be praised for. What the governor's done is pretty remarkable yes, so far. I mean, this is what, what, he's, what he's done. In terms of, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, first of all, the biggest thing the governor's done and some of the others have done, they've recognized this thing called global warming. The world is changing. It's a pretty slick move to congratulate a political opponent for a thing they don't want to be congratulated for. In a situation where they can't respond, yeah, he told me that this morning while we were eating our vegan breakfast burritos. He also told me he's happy Velma's gay now. <laughs> Such a crafty old man move to undercut someone by complimenting them. It's like your grandpa giving you credit for putting your phone down during Thanksgiving. Ah, you know, if I'm thankful for anything, it's that Timmy decided to join us here in the real world. You know, we, uh... Really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule there, bud. We know how hard you work watching those TikToks. <laughs> but the real attention-grabbing moment yesterday was actually caught on a hot mic when Biden was talking to the mayor of Fort Myers Beach, Ray Murphy, and said this. Hey, Thanks for everything. Thanks for coming down. We appreciate it. Uh, I'll pick the food. Yeah, got the invite. Whoa! That escalated very fast. So he went, he went from Uncle Joe to Scranton Joe in like a heartbeat. Like, God bless you and keep you. Uh, thank you, sir. And thank the good people of Fort Myers for all their strength and courage. Well, yes, sir. And just remember what my grandma always said. <laughs> around and find out. <laughs> my question is, what were they talking about? What were they talking How did that even come up? Also, when I first heard it, I thought, is the mayor also a Biden? But he's not. He's a Murphy, because when I use the phrase a Myers, I tend to be talking to other Myers. Like when I pull my kids in close and say, no one picks a Myers first for dodgeball, which <laughs> is fair. We're just genetically bad at dodging. But of course, it will not surprise you to learn that right-wing pundits did not like this. After four years of nonstop politeness from President <laughs> Wallflower over here, they were absolutely shocked to hear profanity. Although one host in particular accidentally made Biden look even cooler with his graphics. Joe Biden was in Florida today blaming hurricanes on global warming. If only we give him control of the weather, he'd fix it. Well, down there, he was caught in a hot mic warning his enemies. All right, tough guy. He's gonna put a severed horse head in your bed if you don't stop asking questions. Pathetic. Is it pathetic? Because your graphic makes him look awesome. <laughs> I came here to eat ice cream and kick ass, and this ice cream's melting real fast. <laughs> it looks like the poster for an action movie where Biden is played by Jason Statham. <laughs> so while Biden was in Florida, he may have dropped some soft burns and occasional profanity, but otherwise he stayed above the fray of politics, even as the midterms intensify with less than five weeks to go. Now, obviously, the midterms are deeply consequential for both his presidency and for the future of our democracy, Republicans have nominated pro-Trump election deniers up and down the ballot across the country. And while the opposition party historically is always heavily favored to perform well in off-year elections, Republicans are stumbling toward the finish line after several of their pro-Trump MAGA candidates have just fully imploded. A MAGA candidate in a swing district in Ohio reportedly lied about his military service. Pennsylvania Senate candidate Dr. Oz has been accused of killing over 300 dogs in his scientific experiments. And Georgia state candidate Herschel Walker, who favors a ban on abortion, is dealing with the fallout from the bombshell allegation that he paid for a girlfriend's abortion, among many other shocking revelations that should, in a healthy democracy, be disqualifying. The craziest thing to me is the GOP just never runs out of ways to shock you. The Democrats no doubt have their flaws, but the GOP is like a magnet for all these pathological liars with incredibly sordid pasts. I can't even begin to imagine who Trump is gonna endorse next. You know, I was watching House of the Dragon and I thought, I like this Damon guy. I like him a lot. Bad wig, great guy, big sword, and we need more swords. We need more swords in D.C. 
with all these crooked Dems running around, we need a sword. And I said, Damon, before I endorse you, is there anything I should know? Is there anything I should know about you, Damon, that might get me in trouble? And he said, I am both married to and sleeping with my niece. And I said, <laughs> I said, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. Walker, in particular, was handpicked by Trump, despite repeated warnings about his troubled past, but it seems like that might actually be what attracted Trump to him, because according to New York Times reporter Maggie Haberman, who just written a 600-page tell-all about Trump, he actually enjoys degrading our institutions, bringing out the worst in people and proving that there is no rock bottom. There's no bare minimum level of decency required of public figures anymore. Does he want the Herschel Walkers to win to prove this point? Does it's, he want more damaged Republicans in the party? He, he wants to show that nothing matters. And one of his goals, and I write about this, is he believes that everyone is just like him. Everything is a transaction. Everything can be exchanged. Everything can be reduced to a deal. There are no red lines. And so to show that there are no red lines always makes him happy. I honestly didn't think there was anything that made Trump happy, but now we know there is one thing, making the rest of us miserable. Like, his mood will never change, but if he brings our moods down enough, his sour existence will count as happy. And then, I don't know, he'll get a morning show where they spell his name with an exclamation point. <laughs> and you could tell Trump delights and blowing through red lines because he does it all the time and keeps doing it, even now that he's no longer in office and facing multiple serious criminal investigations. For example, most people would shy away from the cameras if they were under federal investigation for stealing highly classified documents from the White House. But in a speech this week, Trump actually bragged that the FBI search of Mar-a-Lago gave him free publicity. You probably read and heard about the document hoax. Has anyone heard about the document hoax, helicopters flying over Mar-a-Lago? Well, they've given us about $5 billion worth of free publicity, I will say. People said, that's a nice house. <laughs> if it weren't so nice, they probably wouldn't be doing it because, you know, it gets ratings. When they look, they said, that's a beautiful place. Maybe the search got publicity for Mar-a-Lago, but I don't think it's good publicity. I've never walked by a hotel surrounded by cop cars and circling helicopters and thought, ooh, that looks like a fun place for a little rest and relaxation. <laughs> Let me look it up on Yelp. Four stars, excellent breakfast buffet, very few murders. <laughs> I like those odds. But then Trump made it even weirder when he managed to pull everyone in the audience into his mess with him. No other president has been harassed and persecuted like we have. I speak on behalf of you, too. <laughs> on behalf of you, too? <laughs> They're harassing all of us because we all stole those classified documents together. I'm including you guys, you were there too. You said, Donald, take the nuclear blueprints. And I said, are you sure this is legal? And you guys were like, yeah, go for it. And I said, okay. <laughs> but only because you, the audience, this audience told me to. It was your idea, not mine. We all remember it, we all remember it. You said, do it, I said, maybe not. And, I, and then you, you pressured me, you bullied me. <laughs> so FBI, if you're listening, you better bring a whole lot of handcuffs. So Trump wants to prove that nothing matters, that there's no bar anymore for public decency, that everyone is just as bad as him. The problem is, for most of us, he's wrong. There are still red lines. I mean, let's remember, this guy has been rejected over and over by a majority of voters. He only fell ass backwards into the presidency the one time because we have an insane system where the loser gets the job. I have a feeling if the framers have been capable of imagining Trump at the time, they definitely would have bailed on the Electoral College. Like, if Trump had existed in the 1700s, you know, in those tights, a powdered wig, <laughs> Tri-corner hat, just downing gallons of ye old Diet Coke, selling <laughs> scam products like, I don't know, tea that makes your penis bigger or whatever, <laughs> insulting beloved American politicians. The framers would have come up with a better system. George Washington, he's a loser. Have you seen his boat so small? <laughs> he can only fit like nine guys, not even enough room for him to sit down. He has to stand in the front like a dog. Like, if the Founding Fathers had come up with the Electoral College and then they met that Trump, they would have been like, oh, <laughs> Quick, somebody invent whiteout. We gotta undo this. The point is, Trump is wrong. Most people do still have red lines, and that's why they've rejected him over and over at the polls. Trump has exposed the GOP as morally bankrupt over and over and over, and now it's happening yet again as they rally around various Senate candidates engulfed in scandal. There is simply no lie too bald-faced for Trump. He'll say anything. If he thought he would get away with it. He'd tell people who his best friends with Bono and The Edge and say, I speak on behalf of you too. <laughs> I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay with that. This has been a closer look.
The midterm elections are coming up, so to make sure that you're good to vote in this election, visit our good friends at headcount.org to check your voter registration status or to register to vote.